Good morning everybody. Welcome back to my channel. This is Visualized NZ and my name is Belinda. So I'm working again today, surprise surprise, in the Cowgirls and Lace Journal. I am just so still like ecstatic with how this cover turned out. So if you haven't seen that, uh, watch yesterday's video, I think it is, uh, where I go over that. But let's get stuck in because I have a few things I want to get done today and the first of those is to put on some lace on the pages because you know it's cowgirls and lace theme. So I've got this ginger, it's not lace okay I know it's not lace but it's a trim and I like it and I think it works well with this journal. So I want to pop this on and I know where I want to put it so I'm going to start with this just getting rid of the the bit that's sticking out the end, the core of the, I don't know, even know what you call that, where it's rolled over and it's got a quarter through the middle. Cutting off the end of that bit. Right, so I'm going to put it down the side of this digital page because I think it looks quite nice. So let's cut a couple of bits first, one for each side of the signature. So one and two and I'm going to use my premium craft glue which is an alcohol based glue to attach this. I'm just going to run a line of glue down. So the, the rounded bit that's got the cord through it is going to hang off the end of the page, or the side of the page rather. I guess I see the end because I've turned it around so it's uh, across from me as opposed to up and down. Right, and let's just pop this on right about, oops, there. I think that looks super. What do you think? I really like that and it's got a little bit of blue on the side, a little bit of blue actually in the horse head and it's really picking up that blue now. I hadn't noticed beforehand that there's a bit of blue in the horse. Just making sure it's all nice on that side and then it's got this lovely edging here on this side of the page. So very happy with that. So on the other side we've got this. Um, I don't know if there's any blue, there's a bit of green and a bit of red, but there's going to be a bit of blue. There it is. So let's just pop this on this side. So I hope everyone's having a lovely day. Uh, it's supposed to be very, very hot this week. Um, what are we, I'm filming this on Wednesday and it's going up on Thursday. And it's really quite cool. I had to go and put a sweatshirt on because I was feeling cold. And yet we're supposed to be having temperatures that are up in the 30s. And today it's only supposed to get, only, I say only, only supposed to get to 25 degrees. Um, and I, that will be this afternoon, but it's also supposed to be really muggy. But at the moment, it's just very, very cool and grey out there. And so it's cool inside as well. Right, there we go. There's that trim on that side. Really, really happy with that. I think that's pretty. Okay, so I've pulled out a bunch of other lace options. Uh, this is the same elastic lace that I'm going to use as a closure. So I grabbed out another couple of bits and cut this one open where the seam is just to see if it's long enough and it's it's well long enough to do one side. So I've got two bits and I just need to decide where I would like it. Maybe on a coffee dyed page would be nice to dress it up a little bit. So let's go with that. So I'm going to end up with some offcuts and they'll be good for pockets or something along that line. So I'll do the other one as well. So this one I didn't cut open. I didn't cut it open in case it wasn't going to work and then I thought well I might as well leave it 
sewn shut in case I want to use it somewhere else as a closure or something. Now this is elastic so I'll need to be careful I don't pull it tight when I'm gluing it down because that will cause the page to bunch up. Right. Throw those bits aside into my container. Right, I think I'll let the this one side of the lace hang over the edge. I think that's the right side there. So I need to put just roughly eyeballing where I need to put the glue. So right along the edge. There's a wee split in this paper, so that's going to help hold that little split from ripping any further. I do love the lace hanging over the edge of the pages. I think it's super pretty. Are you a lace type of person? I'm trying to use it more because I love lace, but I tend to hoard it. It's like, oh, it's so pretty. But, like, I get it so I can use it, so just use it, and then you can get some more. Because <laughs> I'm always picking it up when I go uh, op shopping. Although there's one time when I found heaps and heaps of lace at a, um, a thrift store that's about two hours away from me, and we were up on holiday, and we went into it, and there were, they had so much lace, gorgeous lace. But they'd cut it into lengths, so it obviously been on spools, and they cut it into lengths of like three meters, and they wanted like eight or nine dollars per per three meter length, and it's like I'm not going to pay second hand that price for lace. Like I'm after a bargain. To me, that wasn't a bargain, so I left it all behind because it was just too pricey from my pocket. Um, I don't have a lot of money to thrift. That's why I thrift. So. Um, because there's not a lot of meat in my budget. There's not really any meat in my budget, if I'm honest, but there you go. <laughs> I still manage to pick up stuff, so can't be all that bad. It's the usual story. You make do on what you have. Whether that's a little or a lot, You that's what you live to, isn't it? So I don't know why I'm going on about money. Maybe because it's hubby's payday. <laughs> Quite possible. Now, which is the right side? I think. I think this is the right side. Money is a horrible thing to talk about, really. I, I actually dislike money severely. It affects so much in life, and it's really important, but, you know, being able to live. But I just hate the control it feels like it's got on everything. Right, so isn't that pretty how it sticks out over the page there? Love it. Okay, so I also have this creamy lace. And this, um, it's an off-white. It's not a white-white. And it kind of curls, curls around, like it wants to curl around in a circle. But I think I can make it work. So let's see where we might want some more lace. Still got to fix this page. Don't let me forget it, guys. I need to remember to fix that page. Could put it in the middle. What would that look like? That's the... Oops, getting tangled up in my laces here. Would that look pretty in the middle? I think it would kind of make it a, a real stunner of a middle page wouldn't it I'm gonna do it I don't normally put it in the middle but I'm gonna do it because I think that's gonna look pretty and my scissors seem to be quite blunt I think they need a sharpen mind you they get a real workout like I'm using them constantly so it's not surprised and hopefully I'm on camera I just realized I probably wasn't on camera sorry I'm just kind of like really getting into this. I'm enjoying it. And when I am like that, I tend to sit back in my seat and forget that I'm supposed to be up under the camera. So I do apologise if uh, I lapse into being off camera. Get that 
that's the side that we need to glue down whoops I cut it slightly short but it's okay it'll be fine let's just go with it and it's going to stick out quite a long way and I'm not worried about that I think it's just it's just going to be pretty sticks out a lot or a little it's going to be pretty because it's quite a wide lace compared to all the others Right, I'm just trying to put it straight because it has got that curl that wants to curl around. Oh my gosh, I love that. And it, look, it sticks out over the cover. I don't know if you can see that. But I think that's fun. I'm just embracing that because I love it. It's so pretty, guys. I hope you think it's pretty. I think it's gorgeous. Right, same on the side. I'm just going to check that it's... Oh yeah, I cut both of them slightly too short. That's okay. Once it's on the page, it actually looks fine. So I think it's that curl that's making it look too short. Oops. Make sure I don't glue the lace down, the body of the lace into the glue not quite the look I'd be going for Oops. and that one's got a little bit extra snip that off oh my gosh how pretty is that look how far it sticks out I think that is just oh that makes me happy <sighs> makes me happy and when it comes to putting the closure on it's just gonna crimp it down in the middle like and squish it a bit it's fine it'll bounce back um, not a problem right so we have this creamy lace which I think would look nice as well if I can wrestle it it's quite a long bit um, don't know doesn't seem to have a right or a wrong side but where do we want this could look pretty down there would it on the yellow page or does it tone in too much could work I do have this rickrack here which I haven't used rickrack um, I haven't got a lot of it and it's not something I've actually used in a journal before but I'm wondering if we laid that down over top or whether it's just too fiddly and I can't be bothered I do like that though why not why not give it a go be brave Belinda be brave so first I'll cut two bits of this I don't know what's on the other side on the yellow page um, hoping it will work on the other side maybe I better check that before I commit Get that lace out my way so I'm not fighting with it and let's just have a quick look on the opposite side of the signature yeah I did suspect that I had something but that's okay I can just put it on the back I don't mind putting it on the back um, as you probably can tell with the like this one that I did um, where I've put it on the back of the page I don't mind that at all I think it's quite fine to put it on the back as opposed to the front of the page then you get prettiness both ways right and let's cut some of this while we're here this could be interesting to glue so not sure how it's going to go but it's about time i did something with it because it's super cool texture really cool pattern and detail and my scissors don't like cutting it it's also very sort of curly, crinkly to work with. About there, I think. Right. So let's just do it, guys. Let's jump in here and be brave and glue this all down as best that we can. Right. So I want that to hang over a little bit. So about there.
and I'm putting lots of glue down because I don't want it to come adrift even though it's quite holy you know and the glue will come up underneath um, I'm not being shy with the glue because it will dry clear so it will just be a little shiny in the gaps but you won't really notice because you'll be too busy looking at the pretty lace yes like that so let's go ahead and put this straight over top and I think I'm doing it on the edge of the lace like so or do I want it in the middle of the lace I think the middle of the lace and I'm just going to run a strip of glue straight down so I'm not going to try and get all the scallopy ins and outs I'm just going to go straight as straight as I can just using the lines of the edges of the lace to guide me and hope that it's sufficient to hold this crinkly curly Oops, I might need to clamp it or something for a little bit just to hold it at the end. Right, I've got a little, um, what is it called? Um, patchwork sort of style clip there, so I'll just put that there. And I haven't got another one, I've only got one, so... Oops, my fingers are getting all sticky. The other end seems okay. I think this end just had a little sort of kink in it that's lifting it up off the glue. So that should that should work okay. Oh, I think that's so pretty. I'm just having the best time with this journal. It's just is just making me so happy right i think that's all good now i love it show you up close can you see that hopefully it's not too close i'm just so in love with this right stop raving get on with it <laughs> i hope you're having as much fun as what i am because i'm having a ball I think I might be a little sad to uh, say goodbye to this when it, the, somebody buys it. But, you know, I make them so that somebody can enjoy them and then I can make more. I can't hold on to every journal that I make. Our house is not that big. Right. And, and besides, the more I make... The more of my supplies I use up and the more supplies I can go out and find to use of more cool stuff and other beautiful digitals from digital creators. Like, there's so much fun to be had out there. It's a world of possibilities. And I think that's part of what I love about making journals is you can just be so creative and use lots and lots of different materials, lots of different skills, uh, lots of your own preferences, um, everything from colour through to um, techniques that you like doing. It just like encompasses everything. And that makes it so much fun. So if anybody's sort of wondering about where to start on making a journal, I would say start with what you love doing. So if you love cross stitch, for example, then make some cross stitch based ephemera. Make some journal cards or pockets or something that are perhaps some Ada cloth uh, with a cross stitch pattern on and turn it into a pocket. Uh, if you're into painting, then paint up some backgrounds to use for collage or for journal cards or pockets or pages even in a journal. Now start with what you love and then gradually extend out and challenge yourself to learn new techniques and play with new materials because I think you'll find quite quickly that you get into the swing of it if you just start with what you love already. I'm just trying to pick the glue off my fingers because I don't like the feeling of 
of it interfering with my touch. And of course, putting it down with it, popping through the lace is just sticking to my fingers. But there we go. That's the lace on. I don't know whether I'll add more. I'm quite happy with that as it is. Whoops, upside down with care. Let's swing it around the other way. Super cool. So, still got to work on this, this envelope, but that's not today's project. Got to fill that. That's not today's project either. Got to fill this. No, not going to do that today either. Not unless we have time, but I don't think we will have time. Oops, just making sure everything's not sticking to things it shouldn't. While I'm flipping through, I've got something else to go in that pocket. I've got to make something to go in that pocket, I say. So I didn't actually show you the journal card that I made in that pocket, I don't think. Or did I? Anyway, that's the journal card. I, yeah, maybe I did. I can't remember. And then we've got that lace down that one. Did we do some on the back? I don't remember. No, we didn't. We didn't do any lace on that side. But that's all right. Just on that side is fine. We can always put a bit of that lace um, on the next page over or something. Maybe. We'll see. Okay, so everything's looking good. It's looking like nothing's sticking down to anything that it shouldn't. Okay, so for the next one, I had a page chosen out. And can I remember where it was? Was it this one? No. Oh my gosh, where was it? Was it this one? Or this one? Eek. I can't remember. Maybe it was this one. Okay, we'll go with this one. Okay, we're going to make a pocket to go on this page. So I'm going to pop journal aside. And I had to grab out... Uh, my one that I'd already made so I could remember how to make it because I've only got one of these left made up the others I've, that I made are all used and I think I got this off Gail Agostinelli this idea and she got it from somewhere else and I can't remember who that somebody else was but I want to make one of these for this journal because it takes up the full page now I do just want to check that this is the right height for this page and no it's not so we need to measure our page make sure we make it the right size so eight inches we need eight inches high okay so first to our back sheet so we need eight inches high by four inches wide and i've just got this bit of um recycled brown paper out of a pad that I thought there's enough in here for me to use so let's go actually is there four inches at the top yes there's four inches at the top so let's go at this end mark off four I'm just going to do this old school measuring and then trying to see where my marks are sorry if my head gets in the way um, now why does that not look straight to me I don't know it doesn't look straight never mind we'll just go with it because I measured it so it has to be straight doesn't it <laughs> right let's go down to here and then let's just measure this to make sure it really is four inches and that I wasn't looking at the wrong thing no that's all good our eyes can play tricks honestly they can I'm pretty good at eyeballing usually but every now and then I do something completely wonky like my journal for February it's completely wonky like I can't work out how I managed it because I, I did rule it and I checked it and I adjusted it and then it still came out wonky but that's okay it's just my journal from 
for the month of February, so it's okay. It's fine. But yeah, I have n I still can't work out how I managed to get it so wonky. Like, it's just crazy. Right, so this is our base piece, and we want to round the corners. And I think, rather than my uh, corner rounder, I'm going to use my envelope punch board. And I want it to sit on the page this way, so I need to round, which is my front. That's my front, um, so that I don't have to worry about rubbing out the pencil marks, because they're going to be on the back, and they will be unseen. So yeah, I find this punches better through um, various papers. So sometimes when I can't be bothered fighting with my corner rounder, um, I use my punch board. Right, so this is the paper. It's actually quite a thick paper. It's 200 GSM, more of a card, light cardstock. Uh, and this is from a paper pack called uh, Vintage. Hopefully that's not too blurry. Uh, by Unity. I don't know whether that's available in other countries or not. This is just what our local... Our warehouse stationery shop stock here in New Zealand. Uh, it's got some really cool papers. And again, this is an off-cut. I've used it for something else. And I thought, why not use that? I'm just going to take a wee sip of my coffee. Oh yeah, it's only lukewarm now. Ugh. And we want three and a half inches. So eight by three and a half. Uh, no direction to this paper so I can cut it whichever way I please so three and a half by eight so to there Check at the top that I haven't gone a wall or slightly off. So just connect the dots again, very very slightly, like just a just a hair. There we go. sure I cut along that outside line so I get it straight right pop that there it's like where am I putting this you put it down a little scrap okay just gonna check that I've got it all good yep and again round the outer corners Oops, keep it in there straight. This is much thicker, so it takes a bit more effort. Right, so these are quite simple to make, but I just needed my example out just, just to remind me of dimensions and everything. Right, so this gets glued down to there as a pocket. Okay, so I'm just going to do that now. Um, actually, I need to ink it first, so let's ink it first, otherwise I'll probably forget. And then I won't be able to do it because it will just be too darn difficult to get in there. I might as well do this one while we're at it. So this is a bit creased and crinkly where it's been uh, just sort of running around in my bin of papers. But you're not going to see it because it's going to be hidden by our top layer. And that's going to smooth it out as well. So the side that you punch the rounded corners on is the side you're not going to glue. So you just open your glue first. 
here's a, a genius tip for you open your glue before you start gluing okay if you don't remember anything else remember that <laughs> oh dear it's life isn't it remembering the simplest of things can be the hardest sometimes right and down the back here like so and then match it up with your base like so doesn't matter if it's slightly off underneath because nobody's going to see it whoops except if you don't actually glue it on straight okay right i think by the time we've inked that it's going to be not noticeable maybe It's all good. It's all forgivable. Right. Now we need to do these three little pockets on the front. And I thought I would use the same brown paper on the front. Um, I thought that would look quite nice. So we want pockets that are three inches wide by two and a half deep. So I think I might make them two and a quarter deep, um, just because we've shortened the pockets slightly. So what was it wide? Gosh, I can't remember. My brain's gone on the front. It's three inches wide. So yes, we've got enough width here. So let's go three inches. And I'm just going to rule... Uh, draw a line across the top of the ruler and so it will be slightly over three which is fine we've got the space there so that's our three inches it looks yep that's way wider at that bottom i don't know well i don't know it's deceptive it's very... i'm having trouble ruling this morning Right, so I remember the inside line on this one. Okay, let's go. Actually, two and a quarter, didn't I say? So if we went split the difference and went, say, six centimeters, how about that? So this one I'm going to actually use a craft knife because I'm at the point now where I'm sick of ruling and measuring and cutting. So I'm <laughs> reverting back to my usual method and if we go six centimeters that means I can just line it up on my cutting mat which is in centimeters and count off six and cut it and no more measuring ruling lines etc so that's that one then if we go there and I do find this a lot quicker and easier. There and then there. And then we've got our three pockets that are sort of halfway between two and a quarter and two and a half inches. So making it six centimetres. So I like to switch backwards and forwards between metric and imperial measurements, just depending on what suits me, what works for me. Right, so I'm going to put all these together, like so, in a wee stack, and I'm going to punch them all together. And hopefully my punch plays nice. Making sure I try and hold them. Now to line them up, I find, because they're not wide enough to see i like to put my fingers on either side and hold them and that roughly pretty well centers them in the punch like so
Right, let's sync them up. And then we want to decorate the front of them and pop, 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 put, pop, something, um, some coffee dyed paper in the two big pockets and in the small pockets as well. So there's a lot of writing space in this pocket type. You don't lose any writing space, you actually gain some even though this takes up the whole page, or effectively a whole page. Right, there we go. So let's see where we want to arrange them. Making sure we get our spacing about even. So I'm going to glue the middle one first. So we're doing the three sides. And then I can make sure that the top and bottom ones are evenly spaced out from the middle one. I find that's the easiest way to make sure that they're as evenly spaced as I can achieve without kind of measuring and doing dumb things like that. Who wants to be measuring? I've had my fill of it for today. <laughs> Just a thin line of glue needed. Whoops. And then put it on straight. Here's the girl. I almost had a little uh, helper for this video. I was um, watching YouTube over breakfast and Snuggles, one of our cats, came to sit on the desk in front of me. And... Um, I was preparing to do the video and she was just she was just sitting there she was quite happy and then I had to get up and grab something and then she decided she was going to hop down but I really thought she was going to end up staying for the video I wouldn't have minded I, think. I don't think you'd mind either seeing my pussy cat or one of our pussy cats oops this has got some glue just excuse me for a minute oops and sorry I bumped the camera every now and then it gets a bit of dry glue winding when you wind the top up and down it gets a bit of dried glue stuck in there and i knew it was coming because i could feel it was getting harder to to wind it up and down and then just every now and then i've got to try and get it out it's not quite ready to come i don't think i think it needs a bit more winding up and down before it's worked its way Oh, no, it's not wanting to come out yet. So I'll keep these at hand because it's, I don't think it's going to be long. Did get some of it, but not enough. And I've still got glue stuck all over my fingers. Ugh, ugh, ugh. Right, so there we go. So now we need some coffee dyed paper. So I'm going to grab a piece here. And we need it to be, what, these are three inches, so take off the glue space. Probably want it to be about two and a half inches wide. So if we go six, just a fraction over six. lining it up so I get it kind of straight and that's six so I'm just going to go a little fraction over six and call it good doesn't matter if it's a bit narrower than what I said okay. go again And I can see the cut line of the previous cut, so I can 
pretty much keep it to the same width even though I'm cutting them individually oh somebody just came in the cat door sounds like it might be a Georgie yes it is a Georgie you can often tell which cats come in by the sound of the cat door and Georgie likes to bolt through and make a lot of noise and I think it's because he's a long cat and so often his tail gets caught in the cat door on the way through because he's just he's super long and his tail is long he's a thoroughbred he's long and lean and tall and beautiful um, so I think he does that because his tail gets caught and the faster he can go sort of the less of it gets caught okay there's a wee crease here where I had folded this into a journal page but that's all right so folding the top into like a a peak like so and folding that down a little bit and it's like an envelope flap and then this bit just gets folded up into however many sections is that going to work no, I need to go a bit can't remember how I managed to fold it uh, when I did the other ones to get it even but that seemed to work there here we go and doesn't that look cute and then you open it out once you take it out the pocket and you've got all that journaling space it's super fun now I am thinking about maybe putting a little stamp on these though a little stamped something just a little thing to discover for whoever buys the journal so that tucks in hopefully that glue is dry on the pocket tucks in yeah like so so let's go and do the other two okay down again at the top little smidge I think it's just into threes it's just eyeballing it into three is the way to go and that one there I feel like I'm all fingers and thumbs there right and the last one and then we'll do our ones for the side pockets which I might glue it the pocket down to the page first before I do that so it's got time for the glue to dry before I'm trying to put paper inside oops that one's not straight Straighten it up a little bit. There we go. That's better. Hey, Georgie. And that one tucks in the top pocket. So I still want to decorate these up. And we'll have a look in the ephemera from the kit and see what we might like to pop on there. Right, now let's glue it down to the page. So I think it was on this page we decided, wasn't it? So that's going to glue down there. And I think it picks up this uh, bluey greeny colour on this digital page here, sort of picks up. And even that sort of blush colour picks up in the digital. So I think that is quite a nice match. So again, doing the top and the bottom and the side, leaving those where you've curved it open as a pocket. Okay. Oh, 
it looks like Georgie's ready to settle down for the morning. It's about to head up to the cat bed. Right, so we need some more coffee dyed paper. So this scrap, I mean, we could cut that down and just pop that in. Yeah, actually, why not? Normally I fold, um, fold a piece into thirds and then tuck it in. But I'm just going to use this in the front one. And I think it's about the right size. I'm just going to trim it down to the height. So about there. And we'll see whether it goes into the pocket okay. It's quite a light weight paper. So it might not want to go in that easily. We shall see. I'm just going to tear it. Nice little scrap for stamping on. Let's see whether it's going to slide into this front pocket okay. Oh, like a dream. It's all good. Not a problem there at all. So that goes... Oh, is it a little wide? Actually, I need to take a sliver off. It's a little wider. Must be the line of glue I got too, too far over. And I will cut this because I'm not going to try tearing that small bit. In there. Yeah, because I want to be able to see that the next pocket down. So this is a pocket here, pocket here, and then three pockets on top. So now we just need another bit of paper. Um, this is a cool bit of coffee dyed paper got some cool splatters and things on but I don't want it folded in half I want to fold it into thirds and I will need to look make sure the width is okay um, we'll need to trim a bit off the height so and I want it to stick out a little bit so I'm not going to do it quite in thirds. There we go. And let's cut a little bit off that height so it fits in our pocket. I'm going to go about there. Doesn't matter if it's a little bit different height to our other piece of paper. It's all about layering. Right, so let's check that it fits. No, it needs some more off. Okay, let's go again. Okay, I'll take another centimetre off, which I know will be enough. confidently and not at all sure that it is enough or too much yes cool that fits nicely yeah so we have lots and lots of writing space okay let's grab out the ephemera I'll just grab this tray of the smaller bits. And we need smallish things that are going to fit on those pockets. Like he's too tall. That's going to be too tall too. That one might work. And that's the one we used on the pocket yesterday, actually. The same horse that's obviously off the page that I printed two of. Too big, too big. Stamp. Oh, I've got a couple of...
couple of those so if I'd only want one to use one um, no too tall oh that's nice I like that There's a couple of other bits okay just pulling out a few options here and then we'll have a look narrow it down Oh. right I think we've got enough to play with let's have a look what we might like so I'm really liking this one I think that's very very nice it does need a bit more cutting out though I've got this horse head mat safety match that's quite nice um not thinking that one got some horseshoes again it needs cutting out this stamp that might be quite nice partner those up together oh, we don't need that one again we've cut that one out already slightly too big how do we label oh I like the label like the label so how about if we go sort of like something different so we've got a horse there so we don't want another horse fussy cut horse label horse we could go a stamp with a horse on it though or we could go back to our safety matches we could go I'm playing can you tell I'm playing. I want us to fussy cut these and see what they look like. So please bear with me while I give these a quick cut out. And I hope they work because I haven't cut them out so that they didn't get damaged or torn or anything. Um, so once they're cut out, they're more susceptible to getting damaged. So if I don't end up using them, I'll have to go back in my bin and yeah I mean I can always print them out again it's not the end of the world but I'd rather not have to reprint the whole page just to grab one image that I want it reminds me actually uh, when we were young kids or when I was young my brothers are quite a bit older than me but we lived on a, a little bit of a hill above farmland and we used to spend a lot of time down there as kids and friends with the farmer and you know he was all good with us going down there and we had to cross a little creek, go down the hill, cross a creek and there was sheep in the creek and you know it was, it was fun to explore as kids and we used to build tree huts and everything. And when my brother was in his teen years, he was really into looking for old bottles. So he'd go digging on this farm. And it was all good. The farmer, you know, the farmer was quite happy for him to do it. And one time he was digging in this remote little corner of a paddock by the creek. And he found um, a horse skeleton and a silver stirrup. Well, I think it's still silver. It may not be silver. It's probably just like, I don't know, silver metal anyway. Not necessarily the precious silver. Um, and he bought it home for me because, you know, I've been a horse lover all my life. And I've still got that stirrup. I think at the moment it's on the fireplace, behind the fire on the hearth. Probably needs a good dusting off. But I've kept it all these years. And like that probably was 40 odd years ago that he bought it home for me. But to me it's precious. How about we just do the horseshoes? Okay, let's just do the horseshoes. Because then I don't have to worry about them being damaged, do I? Because they'll be down. Right, and I also need to get this one fussy cut. So let's get these two down first. Give you a break from the fussy cutting some ink 
Oh, I love the ink on the edge of that. That's just beautiful. Framing it out, lovely. Right, bit of glue stick. I have no idea how we're going on time. I better check, I guess. I'm just having too much fun. Oops. Straight. There we go. Oh, that's really pretty. I love that. Fun, fun. Right, do our horseshoe shoes. Oops, getting the ink all over them. A little bit fiddly to ink. But let's just pretend they've been buried in the dirt for a, how, who knows, however long, however many years. Just like my stirrup that my brother found. I think there was possibly the remains of a saddle as well, like rotted down. But it just, you know, it makes your imagination run. It's like, what happened? Why was this horse and this tick gear in the corner of a paddock just rotting down? Like, if they'd left the horse there, why wouldn't they take the tack? You know, it's like, what happened to the owner, to the rider? Oh, yeah, I've come up with some theories over my years. And, of course, I've no way of knowing. Like, and then, as far as I know, there wasn't a human skeleton there. It was just the horse. But, like, why would the horse have the tack there? Maybe they were on their way somewhere and the horse died and the, the rider kept on walking, but he didn't want to carry the tack because he didn't have another horse to put it on. I don't know. I just... I, all these years later, I am still curious over what actually happened. Right, this is going to be a little bit tricky. Uh, lots of fiddly little bits. But you'll get to see how I do it. And you do need a sharp blade, otherwise it drags the paper and will tear in places that you don't want it to tear. And that does happen to me from time to time, like that one's dragging there, because my blade is getting dull. Um, it's okay where you've got enough paper that it won't tear, but if you're in those tiny wee gaps, then dragging the paper is not great. And just getting in. Where it started to drag just in with my fussy cutting scissors just to complete it. So this tiny little bit of white here I'm not going to worry about. It's really too small to bother with. If I was off camera I probably would do it. But I honestly don't think it's going to matter in the grand scheme of things going to be barely noticeable and I can always add a little bit of ink there anyway. I've got this lump of glue on my fingernail that I'm holding the piece down with and it's really bugging me. Get that off. There we go. So if you do do this just be very careful where you place your fingers and where you're cutting because you can slip so so easily. And I don't think you really want to be, one, in pain, and two, cleaning up blood off of things, and then either reprinting, if it's a printable, what you've ruined with your blood, or, ruin, you know, worse, if it's something that you can't replace, like maybe a magazine image that you can't find again, or a piece of ephemera that you've bought in a packet that you just wanted to cut a bit out of and you know it costs money to replace it so safety first people be very very careful if you do this right I think I got that now I can cut in my scissors along here Now that I've got enough of an opening, I can get my scissors in. And I do hope I'm on camera. Just slip back. I'm not going to go in and out of the 
dog's tail. Oops, give me a bit, lift a bit there. So not too much to go guys. Thanks for hanging in with me. Oops, I didn't cut that straight, but that's all right. Right, and I'm not going to, oh, maybe I'll get this bigger bit here. I'm not going to do all the white because there's just heaps and some of these, like where the reins are, so very, very thin, narrow strip that would be holding it together. So I'm not going to do the loops of the reins down there. Because I think it's just a recipe for disaster and it wouldn't wouldn't turn out so great for me, I don't think. So, there we go. That's the last bit I'm going to put you through. And I'm just going to, instead, put you through a bit of inking. Just give it. Get those bits, particularly the bits where I didn't like the dog's tail. The outside, a bit in there, the reins, and a bit in between the legs. There we go, good as gold. Right, how are we going for time? Oh dear, we're over time. Right, get this down and then it's a video. I'm sorry, I've just gone slightly over an hour. Just by a couple of minutes. So, it's just been way too much fun. I've really, really enjoyed working on this with you guys. And, got, you know, we're only just starting really. We've still got a long way to go on this journal. Right, let's pop you down in there. I'll just take that out so I can make sure I get it smoothed out. Lovely. Love it. So, we did get quite a bit achieved today, even though we went over time a little bit. So, we've got all those wonderful wonderful laces and these bits in the middle that stick out a long way which is just such fun and then we got this cool pocket made up and filled so that page is done it's complete thanks so much for joining with me today thank you for putting up with my uh, chitter chatter and my fussy cutting and my inking and all that jazz and for being just a little bit over time okay thanks so much i'll catch you again in the next video Bye.